and Irma, created by Sky Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. like the one I made the other day, for instance. Irma? Yes, Jane? You know, it says here that they found a tree with enough lumber in it to build a seven-room house. But, Jane, in the wintertime, when the leaves fall off, won't the roof leak? <laughs> well, I must say, my little roommate is making an all-out effort to improve herself since I threatened to walk out on her a couple of weeks ago. Jane? Yeah, sweetie? Don't you think I'm doing much better than I used to? You certainly are, honey, and I'm proud of you. Especially the way you prepared dinner last night. The whole meal was piping hot, including the ice cream. <laughs> Irma, where did you get the idea of serving hot ice cream? Well, the recipe said to cover the ice cream with hot fudge. Yeah. So I covered the ice cream with a fudge and put it in a frying pan to heat it up. <laughs> give you an A for effort. You'll be all right. Just don't try to do anything you don't understand. Oh, hello, Jim. Come in. Miss Irma Peterson. Oh, Miss Peterson. Who are you? George Clark. I represent Mrs. Higgins. I'm here to collect $50 for the damages you did to her car. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a vacuum cleaner. Come on. Wait a minute. What have you been up to? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, good day, sir. Don't oh, give me that. It's nothing routine. <laughs> Nothing doesn't cost fifty dollars. What did you do? You borrowed Mrs. Higgins' car and wrecked it. Oh, Irma. Oh, and after all the lecturing I've given you, why did you borrow Mrs. Higgins' car when you don't know how to drive? Well, you told me never to be wasteful. Oh, man. What has that got to do with it? Well, someone gave me a ticket to a drive-in movie, and I had to have a car to get in. <laughs> That. Just tell me who was at fault in the accident. The other person. I put my hand out for a right turn. Yeah. And when I turned left, he hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You signaled for a right turn and turned left. Yes, and it wasn't easy. I had to slide across the seat and open the window so I could put my right hand out. <laughs> Irma, I don't understand all this. All you had to do was stay where you were and put your left hand out. Dad and drop my ice cream car. Oh. <laughs> and tell her about those 15 people you frightened to death. <laughs> well, you can't blame me. It's those stupid signs they have. Stupid signs? Yes, it's a safety zone. And when I drove into it to get out of the way uh, of all the traffic, the cop bawled me out. <laughs> so you tangled with the law, too. You're lucky he didn't give you a ticket. Oh, he couldn't. I don't have a license. <laughs> He was going to take me to court. What made him change his mind? I don't know. I offered to drive him there. <laughs> Look, I'm not interested in how it happened. All I want is my client's fifty dollars. But I don't have fifty dollars. Well, I'll give you twenty-four hours to get it. If you don't have it when I come back here, we start suit. Goodbye. <laughs> Gosh, Jean. I, I, I guess you'll just have to let me have the $50. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> but, Jane, you're my friend. You've got to help me out when I'm in trouble. Listen to me, Irma. I am through helping you out of the ridiculous situations you managed to get yourself into. Now, you are strictly on your own. That's a fine way to talk when I've been trying so hard to improve myself. You call this improving? Well, it could have been worse. I almost hit a big truck, but I stopped the car just in time. 
Well, good for you. How did you manage to do that? I ran out of gas. <laughs> Please, Jane, you've got to lend me the money. No, not a chance, Cookie. I don't want to seem unreasonable, but this is unforgivable. Driving a car when you don't know how. You could have killed someone. No, no, Irma, this is your own party. But, Jane, when you're in trouble, I always help you. When was I ever in trouble? That time I set your dress on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I've made up my mind. It is all settled. I'm tired of being a mother to a girl my own age. Come in. Hello, girls. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, Jane, what's the matter with you girls? You sound like you've been quarreling. We have. I don't know what's the matter with Jane. Just because I made a little mistake, she's mad at me. A little mistake. Mrs. O'Reilly, all she did was to borrow a car when she doesn't know how to drive, doesn't have a license, and doesn't have money to pay the damages. Damages? Yes, yes. And I've been telling her that she had no business borrowing a car when she's not a responsible person. Not responsible? I certainly am, and I have witnesses. You have? Yes, a policeman and a driver of the other car both said I was responsible. <laughs> Yes, I need $50. Will you lend it to me? Well, if it's such an emergency, maybe I could... Oh, look now, Mrs. O'Reilly, before that big heart of yours begins to melt, let me tell you something. Irma will never learn to take care of herself as long as she knows that we will come to her rescue. Oh, Jane, how can you be so cruel? Well, Irma, I see what Jane's driving at, and maybe she's right. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to be very cocky. Because I knew I could always run to my mother. But one day something happened that changed all that. Did you? Yes, I was trying to steal some honey out of a beehive. And the bees got mad and started to chase me. So I quickly ran and hid under my mother's hoop skirt. But the bees followed me. <laughs> and from that time on, I was on my own. <laughs> It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and I'm, I'm Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> My three little beauties. <laughs> you, Janie, with hair that shines like silk. Well, thank you, Professor. And you, Irma. Oh, your hair is like a golden sunset. Thank you. And you, Mrs. O'Reilly? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Ragma. <laughs> I might have known you'd run through to form your old reprobate too. Oh, now please, Miss O'Reilly, that's no way to talk to the man that's going to lend me fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> but tell me, what do you need fifty dollars for? Pay for the car I wrecked. How did you ever do such a thing? Whose car was it? Well, it belonged to Mrs. Higgins, and I don't want to ask her for the money because she's mad at me already. Well, I'm a darling. I wish I could help you. Maybe if I hot my face. Wait a minute. Uh, wait. Wait a minute, Professor. You'll do no such thing. I'm trying to teach Irma to stand on her own two feet. And if you encourage her, all my work will be just for nothing. A fine friend you are, Jane, turning everybody against me. No, Emma, darling. What Jane is trying to do is for your own good. You know, a person's character is like a caution. If you want to take the easy way out, you can loosen it and relax. <laughs> but if you have real power and keep it real tight, you'll always be in good shape. The professor's right, Erna. <laughs> Many's the time I've wanted to loosen a whalebone or two and relax. By the looks of you, they must have loosened the whole whale. Well, see here, you. Now, find out what a friend you are. All you do is think about yourself. I hate you. I don't want you. will be the only ones in the apartment with a built-in swimming pool. <laughs> oh, Jenny, maybe we have been a little too hard on her, but I have a few dollars saved look, and I... Look, look, Mrs. O'Reilly, I have the money, too. 
But I refuse to let her get away with these things. She's just got to learn that money doesn't grow on trees. Speaking of trees, come on, Miss O'Reilly. I want you to come up to my room and see if you agree with the birds. <laughs> what do you mean, the birds? Well, a little robin was just about to build a nest on my windowsill. <laughs> but her husband took one look at my room, looked at Mrs. Robin and said, Come on, Mama, this is not the right place to raise a nice family. <laughs> And believe me, if I had wings, I would fly away, too. <laughs> Goodbye, Jamie. Irma! Cookie! Come on out, Irma. No, I know when I haven't got a friend in the world. All right, that's the way you want it to be. Come in. Hello, Jane. Where's Chicken? Oh, it's you. Irma, there's someone here to see you. Who? The Tommy Manville of the Hawk Shop. <laughs> I'm not coming out. What's up, Jane? I'll make it short, Al. She borrowed a car, which she wrecked, and she hasn't got the money to pay for it, and I refuse to help her out. Well, that's a fine thing. You, her best friend. Now, look here. Don't you start with me. I live with the girl, and I'll do what I think is best. Get out of here. Break my poor chicken's heart. What are you going to stand for? No. No. Someday I'm going to marry chicken and take her away from all this. And when I do, don't want her to be such a nervous wreck she can't hold down a job. <laughs> all right, loud mouth. You want to go to bat for her? For me, chicken, I don't do anything. When I go to the end of the earth for her, I climb the highest mountain. I give her my life blood. I okay. I, she needs fifty dollars. That stupid thing. <laughs> Al, oh hello, love. I heard you. You call me stupid. Oh, oh no, chicken. You, you didn't hear well through the door. I said since meeting you, have been a victim of stupid. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't kid me. You're not my friend. And Jane isn't my friend, and if I ever get married, it won't be to either one of you. Goodbye. <laughs> Where are you going? My boss, Mr. Clyde, he'll lend me the $50. You think so? I know so. He told me a thousand times he'd like to see me get what's coming to me. <laughs> and a hammer and told me to hit it. <laughs> well, anyway, now she's on her own. Let her go to Mr. Clyde's house. He's rich. He can afford aspirin. Hello, Miss Peterson. This is a surprise. Come in. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Clyde. Uh, is Mr. Clyde in? He's around back in the garden. Oh, every time I come here, I have to admire your house. Oh, is that a new sofa? I know, my dear. That's a love seat. Aren't you and Mr. Clyde a little too old, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, and that beautiful sterling punch bowl. Oh, it's exquisite. Oh, thank you. It, it was a wedding gift to us. It was made in 1790. Well, you and Mr. Clyde have certainly stuck together a long time. <laughs> oh, this room is priceless. What's that statue over there without the head? That's winged victory. 
Well, if that's Vicky, I hate to see what the loser would look like. <laughs> Speaking of heads, Miss Peterson, uh, mine is getting a little tired. Why don't you join Mr. Clyde in the garden? You can go through here. Thank you. Oh, well, Mr. Clyde! Yes? Oh, it's you. <laughs> You'd better get back in the house and get an umbrella. There's a woodpecker flying around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Clyde, I simply must speak to you. Well, all right. Come over here. I'm planting some petunias. I want to cultivate the bed. Well, you can take your nap later. This is important. <laughs> I thought I was getting a day off. Let's go over here. You can talk to me while I work in the garden. Gee, you have a pretty garden. Did you plant it all yourself? Just about. With the exception of that old weeping willow. That was planted by my great-grandfather. Oh, Mr. Clyde, stop trying to kid me. How could an old man lift such a heavy tree? <laughs> Look, will you just keep quiet while I plant? What did I do with the geranium slips? What? A bit of green things. There was a bunch of them right here. Oh, I've been eating them. I thought it was celery. Oh, no. <laughs> here, take these. What are they? They're Vigoro tablets. <laughs> They'll help you grow, you blooming idiot. Oh, oh. oh don't stop crying. What is the matter with you anyway? Oh, I borrowed a car. Now if I don't pay for the damage, I'll have to go to jail. Jail? <laughs> oh, Miss Peterson, that's too bad. Then why are you smiling? Oh, was I? Mr. Clyde. It'll only take $50. Will you lend it to me? Me lend you $50? Yes, you can take $5 a week out of my salary, and in five weeks it'll be all paid back. <laughs> and to think this is the girl who does my bookkeeping. <laughs> Miss Peterson, I can't lend you any $50. Why not, Mr. Carl? Because you have no business driving a car. But the accident wasn't my fault. Oh, it wasn't. Well, I'm an attorney. I'll find out very quickly. Now, in which direction were you driving at the time of the accident? Frontward. I know you were going. <laughs> now, uh, where did you get hit? In the rear. <laughs> oh, not me, the car. I feel fine. You were making a turn? Yes. Well, why didn't you see if the course was clear? Did you look in the mirror? I didn't have to. I got dressed before I left the house. <laughs> no, no, I, I can't believe this. Was there a traffic signal on the corner? Yes. What color was it? Red. And you went through it? No, I went around it. I hit the lamppost on the other corner. <laughs> Case dismissed. Now, now, this is my question, Mr. Clyde. Can I have the person I hit put in jail? Only if they rewrite the Constitution. <laughs> I wouldn't let you a nickel to get out of this. You're a menace to civilization. Well, if that's the way you feel, you can keep your money. I'll go to a finance company and borrow it. But you have no gratitude. What do you mean? Treating me like this. After what I've just done for you, peeling all these potatoes. Potatoes? Where? You moron, those are my prized valuables. Don't get out of here. <laughs> the Happiness Loan Company. Those people are crying with gratitude because we loaned them some money. Now, what can we do for you? Well, I, I need $50. Do you think you can lend it to me? I believe we can. Your name? Irma Peterson. I live at uh, 8224 West 73rd Street. Fine. Have you any collateral? I've never been a sick day in my life. <laughs> oh, I got a live one here. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, miss. Just sign this. There you are. And here's your $50. Gee, this is easier than working for your money. You should live so long. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, James. 
Mrs. O'Reilly just told me about the terrible news. What shall I do, Now, Professor? control yourself. You know I'm... Uh, too bad her last name isn't Hoover. We could rent her out for a vacuum. Oh. <laughs> and this paper she signed. And the way that man leered at me when he came to appraise our furniture. Now, take it easy. Please. No. I had my lesson with those finance companies. I borrowed some money one time for plastic surgery. Did you have it done? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly I had it done. There must be somebody you can sue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 